Welcome to Biz Coach and Coffee, where our guests are experts, entrepreneurs, coaches, and consultants that share tips, strategies, and tactics to help small business entrepreneurs grow their business for long term success. Please welcome your host, Biz Coach Steve Feld. Hello, everyone. I am Biz Coach Steve Feld, and my goal is to stop business owners from suffering entrepreneurial depression and start making their running their businesses much easier. Business owners and entrepreneurs hire me to crack multiple six and even seven figures without burning themselves out. Today, we have another wonderful guest for you. We have Stacy, who has been a 25 plus year career as a therapist, public health educator, and geek fanatic. But change is one of the few constants in life and is also vital to life. She has spent her career both guiding others through the change process from anxiety about technology to integrating life situations to growing beyond their wildest expectations. She is now on a mission to spread both the tenacity to grow through change and have more work-life balance in the world so we can all focus on our human relations. Please welcome Stacy. Hi, thank you for having me, Steve. <clears throat> well, great. Start off by telling us, you know, what is your current business and how'd you get it started? Well, my um, I have several prongs of my business, um, but they all kind of come around the same theme. The themes of using technology to increase your productivity so you can get more done, but it's with my secret mission of people having more time for self-care and time to have relationships and do this, be able to do what we're doing. Um, and so, you know, coaching, uh, helping, uh, consulting on software and, um, and also really coaching on that self-care idea, coaching on some of our work-life balance issues. Um, and now I lost my train of thought on what your second part of your question was. Uh, why did you start it? Oh, why did I start it? Well, the origin story of my business actually, for the most part, it started in two ways. My, I was working with social workers who are terrified of technology. I think they still are. Um, and I realized they were terrified of technology and my geek friends were terrified of speaking human. So I knew that I, like, I translated the languages. So that was one piece. But one day I'm driving back and forth between therapy sessions, um, you know, and I'm on my cell phone. Um, I think it was, it, it was, it wasn't just the ones that plug into the car. It wasn't the old school box phone, but <laughs> it was not too far after that. And my grandfather had had a stroke and he, he'd had a broken hip and then he had a stroke and he was stuck in a wheelchair, couldn't use his left side. And... He suffered from diabetes, Parkinson's, and then had the stroke. And I knew as a therapist that if he didn't have a socialization, he was at high, high risk for depression. Um, and so I did was doing everything I could just to make sure he was having socialization. And he really wanted to talk to his war buddies. Well... So I taught him how to use his computer, how to use a Windows computer, how to use the internet, how to um, make um, documents, how to scan things in, lots of different tech stuff. Um, he actually handpecked with one hand several family recipes. He handpecked his World War II story from China, Burma, and India. We still have these, like typos and all, and they're beautiful, right? But what I would do is I'd be on the phone with him. And I had to remember what those screens looked like to walk him through it when I was in between in between driving somewhere. And I realized that this was something I was good at, was teaching, especially people who, you know, I had to, I had to be patient with him, but I also had, had the knowledge of understanding what mental health benefits he had from doing this. So um, he's unfortunately passed now, but... I am so blessed that he helped me start this part of my life. And who are the primary people you serve? 
Well, initially, it was actually um, older folks who wanted to learn how to use their computers. I actually taught some um, adult day, uh, adult classes, ed, ed classes here in the area on using Facebook and Twitter and, and uh, some things then. Um, but now, my primary clients are entrepreneurs who are frustrated with cobbling their systems together, who can't find enough time in the day to be able to like have time with their kids or go out to lunch with their best friend or, and that that's kind of what we went into business as entrepreneurs for was, you know, we went in for the glory life and for the, and for the passion. And then we find out quickly that the glory life doesn't happen unless you make it happen. And the, some of the ways you make it happen is shaving off time, doing things that you don't, there's some things we don't have to do all the time. There's tons of automation out there and automation takes tech. The tech scares people. So I help folks find, you know, I help those entrepreneurs find the best systems for them because one size does not fit all. Absolutely does not. And one size might be good for them then, but not five years from now. So we talk, uh, I, I do what I call, I, I do what I call a technology assessment and treatment plan, similar to as a therapist. I, I use my therapy skills with people, but in that tech realm of planning. I get you. It's, I'm, yeah. Working with small business owners, entrepreneurs, it, it's amazing to me. Like they're trying to do everything by themselves. And then they wonder why they're burnt out, frustrated, and nothing moves exhausted health problems nothing moves and it's then you start thinking why did i do this or worse worse than that thought i'm not good at this yeah i shouldn't have done it i'm no good and then you go down that you know rabbit hole of um self-deprecation and the thing is is you are good at it or you wouldn't have gone into it exactly yeah, yeah it definitely gets into the mindset and it's like yeah. years and years ago well, i've owned and operated seven businesses and ran mm -hmm. others. Right. I learned this a long time ago. Take time for you. Mm -hmm. and so every day, it's like in the morning, that's my me time. Yeah. Scratch, exercise, journaling, and it changes your life. Yeah. From And you need to do it from the beginning. You can't yeah. just wait until, oh, I'll do that when. No. You, you have to. I, I teach my baby social workers. I used to, when I was teaching social work, um, I taught them because in that field, we have to do the same thing. I would walk in the classroom one of the first days and I'd say, when is your next appointment with yourself? And they'd look at me and some of them would be able to, they'd wait a little bit and then they'd answer. And I said, you guys all get Fs because you have to be able to answer that just like this. I want to know what it is. I want to know when it is. I want to know, you know, like my next appointment with myself is... Saturday morning, I am taking a no alarm day. And that means there is nothing I have to get myself out of bed for at all. I don't care if it's in the evening. Now, I will wake up, but it's that I don't have the pressure of the alarm clock. Right. And that's my favorite kind of, of I had one on Tuesday, which on a Tuesday no alarm day is very rare, but I found it and I took it. <laughs> I could have easily filled it up with appointments. Oh, yeah. And you have to be real careful of, of how you do that. Absolutely. I mean, I take one day a month is no tech day. That's Ooh. everything. No tech, period. Right. No phone, iPad, whatever it is. No, no TV is allowed. No driving. Nice. And the only reason I do it. No is driving? No driving because tech. No driving. Nice. It's, it's, you're driving a computer nowadays. Uh-huh. Right. <laughs> I, so I walk everywhere, but I read. I read catch up on my writing, you know, go through notes, make handwritten notes, all these kind of things. My day mm -hmm. is still filled with not one meeting and my computer is never on. But it's also filled with it's things that like you want to do, you like need to do. Meaning deep, connecting mm -hmm. with people. It's like, I need to write so-and-so a thank you card. I have a tech date, no tech date coming up. That's the day I got to write all my thank you cards because- Brilliant. Yeah, no distractions, no mm -hmm. phone is on, nothing. Right. And I've had only one person ever go, I couldn't get a hold of you this day. I'm like, it was a no tech day. They go, oh, okay, never mind. Because they knew about my mm -hmm. no tech day. Mm -hmm. and they were yeah, my family's starting to get used to the uh, no alarm days. Yeah. Last week, I thought I had one on Friday. 
And my mother-in-law called me at 1030 in the morning and she said, well, I thought you'd be up by now. I didn't mean to wake you up. I'm like, that's okay. You did. I said, it was supposed to be a no alarm day, but it was you calling and I'm not going to miss a call from a, you know, from a family member. <laughs> but it was like, oh, <laughs> you know, it was also 1030 in the morning. <laughs> I probably, and, and that's what I did. I got up and did stuff anyway. Because in a way, you also have to be flexible. Yeah, you do. And you have to have stuff roll off your back. Because I, I, I just, I was just interviewed for an article the other day, and they were asking me about lessons I'd learned. And one had to do with that, just being flexible and being ready to grow, being ready for the pain of growing, because that, those things are going to happen. But you're going to turn into this human being that you never knew existed. Right. And it's the human being that you might not even have ever thought. You'd never thought of the things you're doing. And if you let yourself, you can turn into this amazing person that you don't even, you couldn't even imagine yourself. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Great. We're going to be right back with Stacey. We're going to take a short break from our sponsor. This episode is sponsored by Spotlight Books. Get your expert book completed in 30 days. If you don't have an expert, lead magnet book about you and how you serve your market, then visit www.spotlight-books.com. Link is also in the show notes. Put a spotlight on your expertise. And we're back with Stacy. <laughs> So, yeah, we were just talking a little bit on there while the sponsor was going, but uh, she was talking about, you know, the, you made up a great point. The, those small business owners, entrepreneurs, we create our own problems sometimes oh. by adding more stuff on our plates. Mm -hmm. you know, I must do this. I must do that. And then the grand scheme of it, you really shouldn't be touching it at all. How well, do you talk to those entrepreneurs and business owners? And, oh, I was hoping they were in here. I thought my my squirrels apparently are hiding from me. I've got a couple of little squirrels that go different places with me. And you know that when people are talking about something and all of a sudden, squirrel, you know. One of the things I, you know, everybody says, oh, get rid of the squirrels. No, absolutely, positively, no. Don't get rid of them because they hold our creativity. You want to cage the little suckers until it's time to use them. But um, the other time is, is sometimes we fart, we like, we, um, we breed squirrels. Mm -hmm. As business owners, we breed squirrels because we have more and more and you put two of them together and all of a sudden you've got 16 squirrels, you know, and, and then we forget that what we came in for or we get too mired in how many there are. And we're missing the fact that one of those is the is really cool, right. and the rest of them can wait. I recently grounded myself. I am not allowed to have any new projects until after the marketers cruise in January 2023. Nice. And as we're taping this, that's seven months away ish. And I can't have it. I cannot start any brand new stuff until then because I have plenty of squirrels in the cages. Oh. You know, and I might extend that actually. I, I don't know yet, but and and ever since I did that, I have been able to really zone in tight to what I'm doing. That's it. And because of zoning in tight to what I'm doing, guess what's happening? Yeah, you business grows business is growing it's the way it always is it's like years yeah. ago one of my coaches said get a journal take all these squirrels and put your put them in the dang journal uh-huh can't touch look at another squirrel until you stop with this yeah. one finish that project mm -hmm. then you go to your journal and rank it by go through and all find of, another one rank it in importance what and look at it one two and three what's going to move your business the fastest and the most mm -hmm. that's what you pick next close that journal and focus on that one. I would, I would say that, but also with the caveat that if your business is already growing, once in a while, it's okay to pick one of those projects that just looks really fun. Yeah, it can. A fun and short one that may or may not grow your business, but it's because it'll feed your soul. Right. Because you need to be able to do that too. 
And so I think to me, it would be like, I'd open the journal and, or before I open the journal, go, okay, what is it my business is needing right now? Does my soul need fed and I need something fun? Do I need something quick and inspiring? Or do I need something that's going to move the needle? You know, and then, like you said, open up the squirrel cage, pick which one gets, you know, adopted out that day, close it back up, you know, feed them, close it back up and put them away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm in an accountability group from the 12 week year, the book, uh -huh. we all have just this many projects going on. This is it. Wow. But that's a lot. A lot. Even at one, that. one is to drive your revenue. One is to drive your systems and processes, your profits. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is for you. Nice. So that's all construct. we're allowed. And if mm -hmm. someone goes, well, I'm also going to do this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did you finish these three first? Right. And they're like, no. Well, that's going to derail you from your mission right now. Yeah. And we keep each other on track that way. And it's like, and I, I would say you need at least like three to six months yeah. in each focus area. And that's about you know, what each one if is. If you, yeah, if you, after about three months, if you've, you know, you kind of hit a brick wall, okay, then it's okay to switch gears a little bit right. and maybe move which one's priority. But you don't want to, you don't want to go just two weeks. And then no. switch and switch because if you do that, you're it's you're almost like jumping again. Yeah, you're, 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 squirrel, you're juggling squirrels. You're juggling squirrels. Yeah, and I'm telling you, it's hard to juggle those little suckers because they go all different directions. Yeah. You know, it doesn't it's work. Twelve weeks. You should have those things done in twelve weeks. <laughs> yeah, and mm -hmm. you know, some people get it. We, some projects are done early. Great. Yeah. What's the next one you're filling in? Right. Excellent. And then like, are like, okay, I found a dead end. Kill it. Kill it right now. Bring in something else. And we've had that happen with some of our members. It's like, listen, I've worked this for a month. I'm going neg I'm going backwards, not forward. Well, kill it. Let's work. Because you've already yeah. adjusted. Put it, put it back in the put, put it, it back, back in the cage. It's not ready yet. Yeah. It's like wine. You know, you pulled it out before it was fermented. That's all. Okay. Right. Just just cork it back up and it'll be ready eventually. Over there. Yeah. But, you know, I think the other thing, just to be fair to, to anybody who's out there who's new or hasn't gone through the parts, hasn't gotten to the place like where you and I are talking about, I think a huge, huge lesson is being gentle with yourself. Oh, yeah. Because if you don't, you know, you can't go zero to 60 in, in your first two minutes, two months, two years even maybe. There's some of these lessons that literally take a lot of trial, error, um, you know, think of a two-year-old or a, a, you know, one and a half-year-old trying to walk. How many times do they fall on their cushioned little patootie and have to get back up before they actually figure out how to walk? Yeah. Entrepreneurs, it's like that, you guys. You might not learn how to, you, and you may learn to walk, but you can't talk in full sentences yet, or you can't uh, do simple math problems yet. Don't worry about it. Allow yourself to fall on your butt. Don't kick yourself for it and don't, don't quit. Because you will quit right before you're getting ready to get up and walk and run. That's it. So true. Well, Stacey, you know, I'm a giver. I know you're a giver. What is something you can share with our audience to help them in their business? Um, as far as a tip or a trick or... A giveaway or something. Oh, you know what? I actually have a brand new one. And it's called the um, self-care planning template. And it does just that. It helps. Uh, there's, um, It's a PDF that helps you plan out self-care. So kind of like what we were talking about is, is when your next appointment is with yourself, this helps you get to that. It walks through a cadence of self-care that I teach. Um, inside the PDF, there are links to some videos um, that walk you through that. And um, that way, maybe that you can get start getting your self-care. And it, it doesn't matter if you're brand new or if you've been in it a while. And if you do self-care even. I encourage people to listen to this one and do it because it has a very specific cadence behind it that I have uh, created over the last 20 years. 
Excellent. So. We will make sure to have that link in the show notes. Nice. Definitely take advantage of Stacy's offer. Great. Any parting words for everyone? Oh, the usually the one I say is have grace with yourself. That's usually what when somebody asks me that at the end of an interview, have grace with yourself. But I'll say it's also next time I ask, be ready to answer when is your next appointment with yourself. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's funny it's in my schedule so i know when it is i was gonna say steve <laughs> when is yours 6 a.m tomorrow morning okay steve you get an a it's 6 a.m every day well that's okay and but i know the it, fact that I, you it's a habit it's mm-hmm. my routine but i know i need that hour for me mm-hmm. every day no nothing's turned on yet i'll be curious what you think of the um of what's in the planner because it's a little more than just your 6 a.m. appointment. I do take some night times too. So. <laughs> yeah. Yep. You gotta have a, I have to have a social life too. Oh, uh, well, yeah. And, and this has, this actually has a cadence that involves various timings. Nice. So. Well, excellent. Stacy, thank you so much for being on the show. Folks, take advantage of Stacy's offer. And move that dial, grow your business. This is Biz Coach Steve Feld wishing you and your business much success. We hope you enjoyed today's topic. If you'd like to discuss how you can apply these strategies in your business, let us know. This episode is sponsored by Spotlight Books. Get your own expert book written about you in 30 days. Set yourself apart from the competition. Make sure you like and subscribe to this channel. Also, feel free to give us your comments. We look forward to hearing from you on Biz Coach and Coffee.